Hi, we're uh, Cat's Tail Book Club, and we're here to have a discussion about House of Small Shadows by Adam Neville. Yes. Yeah, and uh, there will be possible spoilers. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my phone. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to read the book description so that we all know what we're talking about. <clears throat> uh, Catherine's last job ended badly. Corporate bullying at a top television production company saw her fired and forced to leave London. But she was determined to get her life back. A new job and now things look much brighter. Especially when a challenging new project presents, project presents itself the catalog, to catalogue the late M. H. Mason's wildly eccentric cachet of antique dolls and puppets. With rarest of all, she'll get to examine his elaborate displays of post-costumed and preserved animals, depicting scenes from World War I, when Mason's elderly niece invites her to stay at the Red House itself, where she maintains the collection. Catherine can't believe her luck. Until his niece exposes her to the dark message behind her uncle's art, Catherine tries to concentrate on the job. But M. H. Mason's damaged visions Raise dark shadows from her own past. Shadows she'd hoped had finally been erased. Soon, the barriers between reality, sanity, and memory start to merge. And some truths seem too terrible to be real. So that was the summary. Yeah. Uh, well, or the sort of wash label. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, it was my turn to choose a book this month. And I chose this because... I've, I'm a big fan of the Adam Neville's previous works that I've read, and I'm a huge horror fan, and I wanted her to enjoy some horror with me. Yes, I don't read a lot of horror. It's not really one of the my go-to genres, so it was a bit outside my um, normal reading paths, which is nice. Yeah. Quite standard for, standard for me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so. I know you had some annoyance about uh, a certain character called Catherine. Yes, the main character is... Oh, she frustrated me a lot because she just, <laughs> she's so, yeah, I didn't really. <laughs> she um, has a tendency to give everything second chances even when things start, uh, shit starts hitting the fan. She's like, no, it will, it will work out, it will work out. Instead of running for the hills like most normal people would. Yeah, I kept, I, the second half of the book I was just shouting, light everything on fire at her on multiple occasions. But she, I mean, the, the thing is she's an unreliable narrator, right? And it's very, very obvious from the start because she's, um, she has mental illness and... She experiences trances where yeah. she's like put out of time and experiences things that we don't know if are real or memories or what there are. Yes, exactly, and she has childhood trauma. I mean, there's a mystery at the bottom of this, and I was really fascinated and interested in finding out uh, what happened there. So, but um, essentially, when her best friend goes missing, when she's their kids, they're six years six old, years old yeah. yeah, and and that's something that she's carried with her always. Uh, in addition to you know ending up in these trances and things that happen to her, and she seems to be. It's, I'm not sure exactly if it says anything about like a uh, her mental state like a diagnosis or something it's all uh, very vague it's like she has trances and yeah, bad memories a, a diagnosis but there is a traumatic childhood yeah so there's that and and she apparently had a breakdown in london where she was working at a production company yeah and all of that is sort of explained in the beginning but i would have liked to know more about what happened at the yeah. production company it sort of vaguely hinted at sort of a mean girls sort of the mean girls are mean yeah. kind of thing and the ringleader uh, and she comes back later on, it's a sort of a, well, she doesn't really do anything or no, say anything, but she... Kind of minor character. Yes, but it's important to C Catherine's character development. Yeah. And I suppose, I think it's sort of the thing that pushes her to accept more than she should when she goes to visit uh, the house, the red house. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like that was a bit flimsy. One of the things that I really enjoyed about the book was the, the descriptions of the Red House. That is quite creepy and quite brilliant, I thought. Yeah, you could. Uh, Adam Neville has a tendency to describe things like it's easy to picture them. You get a, at least I get a clear picture in my head. Yes, I also really liked the the sort of um, uh, tone of the book and the, the the way the pictures were painted. I could really tell 
creeped out a lot of times. The creep, all the taxidermy and the creepy dolls. Yeah, yeah. The the, um, the creepy themes of this books with the, do- the taxidermy and the dolls are like classically creepy for a reason. Yeah. So it works. Yes. Because there's a lot of everything that happens in this book is sort of based on tropes. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I don't read a lot of horror, but I seen some movies and read some books and I feel like these themes are just in a lot of stuff yeah but um the descriptions are cool and you really I really I got creeped out a few times there so yeah uh, so that's good does yeah. his job there um but yeah like I said Catherine a bit annoying yeah Edith the elder lady is of the uh, mage mason she is also quite infuriating I think <laughs> yes uh and there's a housekeeper that uh, has some significance but doesn't really uh, her character is significant but she doesn't really show up a lot no she's just sort of in the background and she is a mute so yeah and uh i think well catherine villainizes her really quite immediately yeah she's the vicious one and i just never got that vibe of her no uh first, I mean, uh, first time catherine comes to the red house when she leaves, the housekeeper hands her a note that says, uh, don't never come back. Yeah. And after that, she started villainizing her yes. a lot. Because she takes it as a threat yeah. instead of a warning, which is... Um, Obviously yeah. what it was. Yeah. And, uh, and even, even when there's obvious signs that this housekeeper, Maud is her name, uh, that the housekeeper isn't, isn't the evil <laughs> at play here. Yeah. Uh, she believes it and that that is sort of the thing she couldn't see anything that was right ahead of her and and a part of that obviously was that she questioned herself all the time because of her mental state and her trances and things like that but i was just oh so frustrated with her yeah also the book starts out with uh, like a major breakup between her and her boyfriend which also unravels her mental states somewhat yes. and then she jumps on the opportunity to go and stay at this house because she just wants out of her life. Yes. I feel like we could see the setup a bit too much, the skeletons of the story. Like yeah. the the bits of play. Obviously that's not necessarily a bad thing or anything. Yeah, I've read I think this is my fourth I don't novel novel. And I, I rated it five stars, I liked it a lot, but it's also my least favorite of this because it was bit more transparent than his work usually is. Hmm. This, the, the, the quality of this book is in the creep descriptions, really, and the, the, the sort of the uh, weird stuff that happens. Yeah. Also, there's this character, Leonard, her boss, which is uh, involved. I didn't see it coming, but uh, you did. Oh, yes. <laughs> there's a scene in which she looks at some pictures, and I'm like, yeah. I suspected it a little bit before, uh, because he's in a wheelchair. And there's a big disability thing here. Yeah. So one of the underlying things in this book is that M.H. Mason, uh, Catherine starts to suspe- become suspicious that he and uh, his sister started to kidnap children with disabilities to treat them like puppets or... Yes, like, like... I mean, I think the sort of idea is that the puppets or whatever, they, they, that's like a safe haven for people who are outcast or, you know, in this case, very clearly disabled children. Yeah. And they're, and I just, um, but yeah, obviously they're, this is all, and it was horrible and Catherine was terrified. Yeah. It wasn't exactly a haven. It sounds like a very special kind of help. Yeah. But also what, things that happened in the past is sort of a bit hazy. Yeah. So... You can sort of form a picture of it, but you don't really know, know what went on. No. You have an idea, but you don't really know. No, that's right. And um, and you're sort of piecing together this story along the way and all this mystery, what happened to Alice and how is that connected to the house? And then there's the song, the ice cream man song that goes through it. And yeah. There's a lot of of this sort of foreshadowing and all these pieces that are woven together from a pretty early start, and you're just eager to see where it goes, what is the actual thing that connects them. Yeah, which I suppose you kind of figure that out near only near the end. Yeah, so that part was good, and it was so creepy. Yeah, 
uh, I like that uh, the ending is um, a bit up in the air as well. I think, uh, you know, we, she, you know, she's, she probably dies. Yes. And uh, she gets trapped in this house, essentially, yeah. and she becomes these puppet children's mother, essentially, I think. Yeah. She sort of... And uh, the former car worker at first, one, then the one that had been bullying her, becomes the new housekeeper. No yes, mute. that's supposed to be her revenge. Yeah. And I'm like, that's not proportional. No, <laughs> that's not how... But that's how the thing, right? This place is supposed to be good. Yeah. They think they're good. It's kind of like um, a funhouse mirror. Everything is distorted. Is it? Yes. It's this different sort of, it's like an alternate reality thing, really. Like a bubble on the universe sort of concept. Yeah. This house. Because nobody can find it unless they're invited. invited. So, so when Catherine comes, it's this grand uh, Victorian house that seemed, it's like, it's old, but it's preserved. But in the end, when she find she wakes up and finds herself in the basement it's a ruin and when she returns to the room she wasn't formally she sees her body yes so presumably if you just stumble upon the house it would just be a ruin yeah so it's not really there it's like an alternate dimension sort of yeah so, yeah i think we got it then yes i do think so yeah did you rate it uh, I haven't done that yet, no. I think I'm going to give it um, four stars, maybe. Yeah, because you and she never gives five stars. Well, <laughs> rarely, sometimes. Rarely. So I'm super excited. Yeah. I hate stars. Yeah. They're so, yeah, they're so arbitrary. They are. Well, I think that's it. Yeah, I think so. So, for the cat's tail. Next month. Next month, yeah. Next month's <laughs> book. Uh, A Brave New World by Adolf Huxley. Uh, yeah, Aldous Huxley. Aldous Huxley, yeah. Yes, Sorry. That's what we're reading in May. We traditionally read classics. And we have, I think we were supposed to read this once before and then we just didn't because yeah. we went on hiatus. Yeah. And now we're going to do that. Yeah. So if anyone wants to read along, you're welcome to. Yeah. You find our links in the description as well as a book depository affiliate link. Yes. If you use that, we get to buy more books. Yes. <laughs> So we'll probably be back next month then. Yes. And uh, yeah. Bye. Bye.